what is this pleasure of the Sabbath about? And um, we read already in our introduction key, uh, text that um, it says that if you um, do those things, uh, the highlighted word says that then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And uh, notice the last word says that for the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. What does that mean? The mouth of the Lord has spoken it. That means that the Lord made a promise. And the promise that he makes with you and I today is that you can delight yourself in the Lord by honoring the Sabbath. And also, um, if we read in Exodus chapter 31, verses um, 16, it says that, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbaths to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation, for what? For a perpetual covenant. What does it mean, perpetual? What does it mean, perpetual, this word? It means eternal. So if we have entered into an everlasting covenant with God, the seventh day Bible Sabbath will be continually re, um, observed. And um, what do we show by, keeping, by coming to church on Sabbath? That we are in a covenant with God. For how long? Forever. And um, it's amazing that this Sabbath um, remained unchanged from the beginning. We see that when God created the Adam and Eve, he gave them a gift. He gave them the Sabbath. And what was the Sabbath to be for them? It was a memorial of the creation. And even today, when we read the first commandment, what do we remember there? The Lord who created heaven and earth. So it's still a memorial of creation. But I tell you something, that even on the new earth, this Sabbath is going to be kept. And that is going to be a sign or a memorial of the new, of, or of the recreation, or restoration. When we all shall be in heaven, every Sabbath we are going to meet with God. So I mentioned that this Sabbath can be a delight for us. A delight when we can um, delight ourselves in the Lord. So, um, also throughout the ages, we see that Satan tried to destroy this Sabbath. And um, you could see that with the family also. He tried to destroy it. He tried to destroy everything that reminds us of God. And um, if we think about this, why do you think Satan tries to destroy the Sabbath. Does he enjoy when we delight ourselves in the Lord? So he doesn't want you to feel the joy. And also, he hates the Sabbath because by keeping it holy, we show that we serve who? God. So throughout the ages, as I mentioned, he fought against this day and even today. But it's interesting that first he attacks the Sabbath keepers. And um, if we look in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 13, we see that um, here it says that, Wherefore the children of Israel, sorry, um, yes, but the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. So we see that these people, they were God's people at that time. But by not keeping the Sabbath holy, they were cut off from, from these people. And the reason also, they had to go to Babylon. Do you remember what was the reason? They had to go to Babylon was, again, for not keeping the Sabbath holy. So how did they pollute the Sabbath at that time? Let us remember the people of God in, in the wilderness. How did they pollute the Sabbath? What did they do? 
they were worshiping other gods, true, because they came with some heritage from Egypt, but also they kept always complaining, complaining and murmuring. And because of that, they polluted the Sabbath. And how can we also pollute the Sabbaths today? We are here, a group of people, and the Lord's prayer is that we may all be one. And whenever we are in a disagreement or whenever we are in disunity, we just follow the examples of the people in the wilderness by polluting the Sabbath. And Satan rejoices in this because he knows that when there is disunity, there is no strength. And then we pollute the Sabbath, and even though we believe that we did the right thing by coming to church, we may not even know who the Lord of the Sabbath is. So first, he is trying to corrupt the chosen people of God. And Patriarchs and Prophets mentions, page 336 says that in order to obliterate God from the minds of men, Satan aimed to tear down this great memorial. If men could be led to forget their creator, they would, they would make no effort to resist the power of evil, and Satan would be sure of his prey. So you see, what's the reason why Satan tries to destroy the Sabbath and all the memorials that brings us um, the thought of God? Is because if he knows, if he takes the image of God, the thought of God from our mind, then you don't feel like uh, you are, whatever you do, you, it's wrong. You don't feel anything. And Satan would be sure of his prey. And if we think even about other covenants, um, and um, I remember then, um, whenever we see a rainbow, what do we think about it? We remember the story of Noah. We remember that when they came out of that trial, the flood, the Lord made a covenant with them. And what was the covenant about? No more flooding, there will be peace, and the earth will not be destroyed anymore by water. And uh, when in this generation, when you see a rainbow, what do you think about? You see, Satan is trying to change, to take the image of God from the covenants that he made, and he is trying to do that even with the Sabbaths. The same he tried with the marriage, the same he tries with the Sabbath, to take away from people's mind everything that reminds us of God. And um, that was the first point. Satan is trying to corrupt, to, to deceive the Sabbath keepers. But then also, secondly, he tries to introduce other Sabbaths or maybe no Sabbaths at all. And I bring you some examples, for example, in uh, in the Islamic world, they have a different Sabbath, and they don't worship on Sabbath, the, they don't worship on Saturday, but they worship on Friday. So here is just a, a quote from their publication, says that, oh, you who believe, when the call to prayer is proclaimed on Friday, hasten earnestly to remembrance of God and leave aside business. So do you think we may receive blessings of God if we try to worship him in a different day? If we go to uh, India, there the question was, do Hindus have a Sabbath day where it's every day as holy? And the answer is, well, both and neither. Meaning that Hindus do not thrive on groups devotion so each individual must make his own arrangements. So here we come with the family to church, right? And we meet other families, we meet friends, we meet other people, believers in Christ. But there, whenever you want to go, you just go. That's their point. And another religion here, the Sikhs, they do not observe a Sabbath. And again, they say that they do not set aside any special day for worship, nor does it have a particular day of rest. So first, Satan is trying to attack the Sabbath keepers. Second, he is introducing a different day to be the Sabbath or no Sabbath at all. 
And also in the Buddhist world, we see that they do not observe a weekly holy day. Depending on the tradition and person, Buddhists attend a temple where it's more convenient probably to worship in their homes. And probably for those of you who visited those places, you see that each home has a, a room for an altar. And uh, instead of going to a church or anywhere, they just, they just worship home. Again, in Patriarchs and Prophets, we read that by causing men to violate the second commandment, Satan aimed to degrade their conception of the divine being. By setting aside the fourth, he would cause them to forget God altogether. And um, it's amazing that also in the Christian world, they pretend to worship God, but when they come to the second commandment, they worship all those graven images. And by the time they come to, to the fourth commandment, they already have no idea who God is. So Satan tries to turn down this memorial just to take um, our image from, from God. And um, another point, we see in Selected Messages, volume um, 2, book 55, says that the worshippers of God will be especially distinguished by their regard of the fourth commandment. Since this is the sign of his creative power and the witness to his claim upon man's reverence and homage, the wicked will be distinguished by their efforts to tear down the Creator's memorial, to exalt the institutions of Rome. And um, I mentioned already that first, uh, Satan is trying to attack the Sabbath keepers to make them uh, deceived. Second, to introduce a different day to be as a Sabbath in different worlds. But in the Christian world, they introduce Sunday to, instead of Sabbath. And it's amazing that if you Google, when was the Sabbath changed to Sunday, I got in only 80 seconds uh, over 12 million results, mentioning that on March 7th, 321, there was a change. And the great controversy says that it was in behalf of Sunday that Popery first asserted its arrogant claims. And um, also, try, they tried in many other ways to get rid of this Sabbath. And um, even in the pagan uh, or the atheist countries, they try to introduce a different cycle. Like today we have a seven day cycle for a week. But they tried different numbers. And look what happened here. Um, the Soviets, this is in the Eastern Europe, they tried a five day work, says that they should work four days and on the fifth they should rest. It was a non-stop week. And um, the problem here was that the rest days was different between family members. Like if um, as a family you are working, the husband would have his rest day on a Tuesday, the wife on a Wednesday or on a Friday, and they would never be able to spend time together. And also they noticed that the factory overseers realized that mach or machines were breaking down more frequently because they were going nonstop. When they saw that this doesn't work, they came to a, a different um, uh, number, and instead of working four days and have the fifth day as a rest, they started to work five days and have the sixth day as a rest. But in 1940s, they went back to the traditional seventh day week. They saw that they could not change. And the history also has evidences of a nine day week. You see in the Baltic languages, and, but also it did not survive. And for those of you who are familiar with the great controversy, we see that even the French people, the, they tried when it was the French Revolution, they tried to have a 10-day week. And also, again, this didn't work. And um, in 2015, 
there was an article published in New York saying that why can't we get rid of the seventh day week? You see, throughout the history, they tried. Satan tried to change the image of the Sabbath, to say it's not a Sabbath Saturday, but it's Sunday, or it's Friday, or it's any day you choose. But even though they tried different ways, the question is, why can't we get rid of the seventh day week? And uh, the answer comes in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6, says that, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore his sons of Jacob are not consumed. So, although much has changed since creation, God never changes. And also the Sabbath didn't change. Why? Because the Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath as well. And um, in Patriarchs and Prophets, we read that God himself measured off the first week as a sample for successive weeks to the close of time. So he himself had a tape measure, if you want to portray that in that way, and he measured off the first week as a sample for the successive weeks. So even though we are thousands of years since the creation, we still follow the seven-week cycle, and the Sabbath is still there. And probably you received a question from people, how do you know that the Saturday that you are um, worshiping is the same Saturday as it was at the creation? Because they say that they change the calendar, other people, they use different calendars, and how do you know that Saturday is, the, is Saturday and it's not Tuesday? You had that question probably before. And the, a way to answer this question is to ask, but what day do you worship? And they will say probably Sunday. And why? Because Jesus resurrected on the Sunday. And you can come with the question, how do you know that this Sunday that you worship is the same Sunday that Christ resurrected? And if they say that they are sure of that, well, Saturday is the day before Sunday. So um, even though the week changed, the days are still the same. And we know that because even when Christ was upon the earth, he wouldn't worship on a wrong day. As his custom was, on the Sabbath day, he would be in the synagogue. And there is um, around them, even, uh, it's affecting even the Christians, the fifth point, how Satan tries to tear, tear down the Sabbath, says that, through the opposition of science, false is so called. And um, Patriarchs and Prophets mentions that the assumption that the events of the first week required thousands upon thousands of years strikes directly at the foundations of the fourth commandment. And uh, probably you experience visiting a cave or visiting um, something natural, beautiful, you go there and then you have to listen to their lies. That this took so many thousands of years to form. And the patriarchs and prophets mention that all these lies are there to strike directly at the foundation of the fourth commandment. And um, even the Christian world is affected by this. And um, you have here a statement from October 27, 2014 from Rome says that when we read about creation in Genesis, we risk imagining God as a magician with a magic wand able to make everything. But it is not so. So this is coming from the Christian world today. And um, what will people who worship God remember always? Isaiah 58, 12 and 13 we already read these verses, that they that shall be of thee shall do what? Shall build the old places, old waste places, that thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the paths to dwell in. Do you want to be called this way? Because the promise is coming after that. 
says that if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, the promise comes after this, saying that then thou shalt delight in the Lord. And this is the responsibility that rests upon God's people today. A responsibility that rests upon you and I today. To repair the old paths, to repair the old foundations. And um, probably you heard the story of Elijah. When um, he came uh, after um, the draft in, um, in the land, he came and what did he do first? He built where he restored the old forgotten altar. They had the altar there, but because it was not in use for so long, those rocks came apart. And Elijah started to restore that old forgotten altar. So the same is with the Sabbath. And what will be the result if we choose God's rest for ourselves? Let's read together. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29, that says, that's an invitation from Jesus, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So are you tired of finding your own ways? I am remember when I was a child and um, you know we've been always observing the Sabbath but my father had co-workers that they did not and um, I remember one time we were driving and um, one of his co-workers he's telling him well at least you have the Sabbath to rest and my dad was asking but what do you mean you have a Sabbath too to rest you have Sunday to rest and he says well it's not the same why is not the same? Because even though they rest on Sunday, we first see that it's not the Lord's blessing there, but also they are cleaning, they are cooking, they are doing so many things that Sunday is not a Sabbath, it's not a rest. And um, why is it important to be resting in the day when God is there? If you go to or if you are waiting for someone, if the person says that I'm coming on Saturday and you go there to meet him on Tuesday, are you going to meet the person? No. So on Sabbath, it's the our appointment that we have with God. So are you tired of finding your own ways? Because many times when people cannot find rest for their souls, they turn to alcohol or to different um, habits that they cherished, thinking that this will help. How much will this help? Maybe for the moment, for a few hours, at the longest. And then when they wake up from that, they feel the same, maybe even worse than they were before. Are you tired of being sidetracked by Satan at every turn? Do you want this kind of rest for your soul? Are you doing the will of God? And another question, do you know God in a personal way so that it results in eternal life for you? Because according to John 17, 3, we read that this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So do we know Christ, that it will result in us eternal life? How is keeping the Sabbath related with our eternal life? If we read in Exodus chapter 20, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20, we see that the Sabbath shall be a sign between you and God. And what does it mean to know God? You have his sign also. And people looking at the sign they know that you know God. They know that you are a follower of God. 
And um, also, if we think about um, David, he was praying, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And when we remember the strength that God has, the power that God has, as Brother Patrick mentioned during the Sabbath school at the end, that we serve a God that he can do. And uh, if you think about his strength, during seven days, he just said something and it was done. He said, let there be light. And the light was there. Let there be animals. Let there be other things, men. He created him. But the other things, he just said, he spoke the word and it was done. Do you believe that the same creation can he do in your heart today? Yeah. With just a word, he can do that in our hearts as well. So therefore, the Sabbath was a, it's a sign also of the new creation. Because if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. All the things are passed away. Behold, all the things are become new. But also, as we studied during the Sabbath school, if we don't have the love for that, how much will benefit us? And the same is even with the Sabbath. Jesus many times was bringing us to think about that. And just think about these um, um, words in uh, Matthew chapter 23. We read that, then Jesus spake, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whosoever they bid you observe, what do they do? They do not observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. And what did Jesus say according to this, in regards to these words? That we have to exceed their righteousness. He, he says that, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And think about them, these Pharisees. They were professing to be God's people. They were worshiping the Sabbath. Even they were really strict in the Sabbath. You couldn't walk more than, than they said. You couldn't do you couldn't talk other things that they said. And yet, Jesus is telling us that we should exceed this, and otherwise we won't see the kingdom of heaven. And also, there is a verse, two verses in 2 Thessalonians, says that, and with all deceivableness and of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions, and they should believe a lie. So this may be a delusion even for the Sabbath keepers. You notice that it doesn't say there, those who do not accept the message of the truth, they will believe a lie. It doesn't say that. But it actually says that those who do not love the truth, they will be deceived. So even though they are worshiping on Sabbath, they are coming to church in time, opening the church, cleaning the church, doing so many things for God in their own thoughts. But if they have no love for this truth, this truth avails them nothing. So mental acceptance is insufficient to carry us into eternity. And um, I would like, um, in the next moments, just to remember a few things that we can um, uh, check on our list to see if we observe the Sabbath correctly. And one of them is six working days and the day of preparation, and then comes the Sabbath day. And we see that the Lord himself measured the, this cycle. And um, the commandment says that six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. 
And um, what do we understand from this commandment? We had this even during our Sabbath school a few weeks ago. Meaning that if we do not work these six days, what do we do? We can break this commandment. And also, what do we need to remember during these six days? To remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And uh, ever since I was a child, I was thinking about what does this mean? Remember, remember. And um, we also can um, relay that to, to us. So right now uh, we have um, uh, a small group um, that we pray every evening with. And uh, it was interesting last night that we went uh, there online and we were waiting, we were waiting. And um, some people that they came with the initiative, they were not there. And then uh, we texted them, we called them, asking them, we are waiting for you, are you coming? And uh, they were surprised in a way because they, they were saying, well, you are online, what do you mean? Is there anything special going on? <laughs> so you see that even though we had this every evening throughout the week, sometimes we may forget. The same is even with the Sabbath. The Lord knew that we have these busy schedules, and you know what I'm talking about. We wake up early in the morning. Sometimes we come late in the evening. Sometimes we come at the end of the week home. But what do we need to keep in mind? That the Sabbath is coming. And um, we need to have that in mind as soon as we close or conclude the Sabbath, Saturday evening, we need to remember that another Sabbath day is coming so we can schedule our activities in such a way that when the Sabbath is there, we are ready to receive it. And also, um, what do we consider as a seventh day? When we look in the book of Genesis at the creation, God said that, there was an evening and there was a morning and that was the fifth day, that was the sixth day, that was the first day. And if we think about um, our days today, Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 mentions that they think to change, that they think to, that to have strength, to have power, to change times and laws. And um, today, when do we know that it's a new day? At sunset, according to the Bible. But according to your phone calendar, it's, a, it's at midnight. Because Satan tries to change everything that reminds us of God. Even the new year. When, when do you start your new year? The new year, according to the Bible, it's in the springtime. But according to our calendars, it's December. So everything is trying to, to make us forget about God. But we have an example in the Bible to see that the Sabbath is observed as from Friday evening to Saturday evening, from sunset to sunset. And it's in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 19. And it says that, um, And it came to pass, and when the gates of Jerusalem began, should be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gate should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants said I at the gates that there should be no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So this was a reformation in the time of Nehemiah. And um, there are many things that we need to prepare for. Because uh, according to the New Testament, this Friday is called the Preparation Day. And um, there are many things that we prepare for the Sabbath. And you know, we prepare our clothes, we prepare our food, we prepare everything. But the question is, what if we do not finish everything before the sunset? Things that we need to do. And let us consider an example from Luke chapter 23. Verses 54 and 56 says that, And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. 
And the woman also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after, and beheld the sepulchre, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So we see this woman, they had an important job to do. What was their job? To embalm Christ, the body of Christ. Because as we read, we see that he was crucified on Friday. Just before the sundown, he was taken down from the cross, brought into a sepulcher, and this woman wanted to do a wonderful job, a wonderful work, to come and balm the body of Christ. And what did they do? They had time to prepare the spices, but they had no time to go back and, and to finish their work. And when did they finish their work? Or when did they try to finish their work? Let's read the next chapter. Verse 1 says that now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain other with them. So even though there was an important work to do, and we talk here about the, the Lord of the Sabbath, still according to the commandment, they rested on the Sabbath day, and on Sunday they wanted to follow their, their work. So um, if we keep the, the Sabbath this way, says the Testimonies, Volume 6, page 354, when the Sabbath is thus remembered, the temporal will not be allowed to encroach upon the spiritual. No duty pertaining to the six working days will be left for the Sabbath. During the week, our energies will not be so exhausted in temporal labor that on the day when the Lord rested and was refreshed, we shall be too weary to engage in his service. And probably you had that experience sometimes, like the week was so hard and on Sabbath morning you know that it's time to go to church, but you are between two decisions. Should I go or I should stay? Well, it's called a resting day, right? Should I rest? And um, what does it mean to delight in the Lord? Because um, uh, if we take it literal, we just sleep all day and delight that we can rest. But uh, being delighting in the Lord is more than that. Because we see that on the Sabbath day, even in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve would meet with Jesus. They would spend time with him. They would learn from him. So um, the Sabbath, the delight of the Sabbath, is not just the physical rest, but also the spiritual um, refreshing that we could get. Also on the preparation, if we think about the uh, people in the, in the wilderness, before they meet God, says here that they should wash their clothes. So, on the Sabbath day, I mentioned that we meet with our Creator. And for that special day, we need to prepare. Because even if you go to an interview, if you go to, sometimes even if we go out to do some grocery, we make sure that we have nice clothes on us. We wash ourselves and we go. So also, our homes, our clothing, our bodies, they need to be clean. And um, also, what I saw something interesting here, we saw that about the clothing, about the food to be done, I said that also let the boots be blacked and the baths be taken. It is possible to do this if you make it a rule. And um, just some uh, points I'm going to get from here too. It says that all secular work should be laid aside. But notice, also, the other highlighted word says that also all secular papers be put out of sight. And why is this important? To put all the secular papers or in these days to make sure that we won't be deceived to go to read those notifications? Why is it so important? If we go to um, the last chapter, of 
Exodus. And I didn't put that, that um, verse there. Therein we have the experience of God's people building the tabernacle. And um, there the Lord told him, told Moses to build this tabernacle and gave him the blueprints, everything. And yet the tabernacle was there, everything was finished, and yet the presence of the Lord was not there. What was necessary for the presence of the Lord to be there? What was necessary for them to do? Exodus chapter 40, verse 33, says that, And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate, so Moses finished the work. So everything was done, but they didn't have a fence round about the tabernacle. And now verse 33 says that they reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. And then it says Moses finished the work. But let's read verse 34. It says that then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So what was necessary for the glory of the Lord to fill the tabernacle? There was necessary to be a distinction between what is holy and what is not holy. And the same is today. We pray on Friday evening that the presence of the Lord may be with us. Even when we open this meeting, we pray that the Lord's presence to be with us. But how do we make sure that we keep the Lord's presence with us? We need to pray to put, to build these fences round about our hearts, round about our minds, because we may be in the Sabbath day. But if we read all the secular papers, our thoughts are there. We think about the news, we think about the politics, we think about all other things. Oh, the gas is more expensive today. And the presence of the Lord cannot dwell if you are not thinking about the presence of the Lord. So let us take these thoughts from today because uh, we all want to be called what? Restorers, repairers of the bridge, the restorers of the past to dwell in. And um, I mentioned already that this it's not just temporal. It's not just going to be here as long as we live. But every new Sabbath, even in the kingdom of God, we are going to meet together and celebrate. So as long as we still live on this earth, let us take these Bible verses and apply them to our hearts. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the past to dwell in. Can we say that I want to be a restorer also? Amen. Let us pray and may the Lord hear our prayer and bless us with his spirit and also with the victory. Amen.